Hello and welcome, Cynthia Miller here, and we decided to paint some Irish sheep for St. Patrick's Day. We're uh, picking out our colors. This one is going to be more green. Um, we've um, done a, a few different um, sort of methods of, of the, uh, the sky and behind, but uh, yeah, just getting my colors together here. Um, you know, I always say, get out the little pieces of paper and um, try it out. Make sure that these papers that you use are the same as your artwork papers. And um, yeah, let's get started with this fun little project. The sheep are really easy to paint. It's just a matter of getting the, the shading of the white. And I really did um, a different sort of a background here. I like the way that it... Uh, the light shines through, it's a little bit of a hazy um, mauve color and it really does look like there's hills behind there. Uh, let's your imagination sort of uh, figure out what's going on. So I'm getting out my mop brush here and this is really um, a big one but it, I'm using a smaller mop brush and it holds water so I'm going to saturate my paper where the sky is. I'm going to put lots of water on there um, and of course you know you want to sort of put it along the edge of the tops of the the sheep and the wall there but you don't want to have so much that it's pooling and I think that just um, spreading it around letting the paper soak it up a little bit I'm using my number six there uh, round brush and I'm just putting in this green um, dust green that I uh, love to use. Um, I was mixing it up before. I've got sap green in there as well so there there is a little bit of a mix. And what I'm doing is just blotting in the color. What I want it to look like is that there's a bit of a forest behind the sheep um, or at least that the the green hills go go on and on. Now I'm putting in a little bit of yellow here. This is the transparent uh, transparent yellow and I want it to look light, so um, I am using that, that particular yellow, then adding more dust green here, and I'm just taking my smaller brush, going along the tops of the, the heads of the sheep as well as the top of the, the brick wall, or the stone wall. So what we're doing is building up a bit of a base, and I'm taking my pencil, I don't really care if there's paint that gets on it, but I'm just rolling it along this wet base that I have created. I've got a little bit of a darker green at the bottom, I've got a nice yellow, make it look like the sun shining through, and then green on, very light, lighter green on the top. And I just rolled my pencil along, and now I'm getting out a piece of plastic wrap, and what I'm going to do is just dab it into my color and dab it onto the tops of where these um, these you know trees are basically is what I'm trying to do is make it look like there's trees with a little bit of light shining through and I just thought this would be a really fun um, sort of way to create this this texture in the back because our foreground is is fairly simple we've got three sheep and um, parts of a, a stone um, wall and we want to have some interest we want to have something that takes our eye into the, the into the picture into behind the sheep and I think that this is a kind of a fun way to do that and what I'm doing now is just taking my very fine brush I think this is a zero or a one and or you could use your rigor brush it's a nice long pointed thin brush and just fill in the spaces between the sheep's head with a little bit of, of water. The green will just sort of take its place wherever you put the water. Just do it very lightly. Um, you don't want it to stand out once you get the, uh, the sheep's head um, painted. That's what's going to stand out, but you want it to, to have a little bit of um, interest there. So I'm just adding a little bit more dark so uh, one or two, three or four layers to the tops of these trees might help to bring out that shape. Now remember it dries quite a bit lighter than the paint going on there. So, and I'm just going to um, do a little bit more there. 
I think I wanted it to just have a little bit more look of the, the shapes in the back. And I like the way this turned out. Okay, so I'm using number four brush, a little bit smaller than what I did the background. And I'm coming up with the color of Payne's Gray, and I'm going to use the uh, Burnt Sienna. It's a little bit lighter. Burnt Umber is a little bit darker. So I'll start with the light, and I'm actually going to mix the gray with the brown. Um, I want to um, have a stone color. And of course, you know, there's not just one stone color. It's very um, varied as, as uh, your eye moves across the, the wall. So what we're going to do is just start out light and uh, just put layer upon layer and um, try to stay to the, the pattern of the uh, three-dimensional look to the wall. There's uh, top, side, and then there's the end. And it, it's uh, very important that you give it some three-dimensional look to it. And so that's what I'm mapping out here is just the the rows uh, of the stones. So as you can see, as I build this up, there is a three-dimensional look to it because I'm including um, the end of the, the wall. And it's very important that you make it look that three-dimensional look. So you've got a bit of a corner there. You want to accent that as you go through it. So I've gone over the stone wall quite a few times and you can use the same shade uh, and the same tone um, over and over again. And every time you put on a little bit more, it adds a little bit more dimension. And um, you'll see that I'm just sort of playing with it, filling in those spaces. You don't want a whole lot of white because um, there's a little bit of uh, light shining through there, but um, you do want it to look a little bit more on the darker side. So I've mapped out the angles here of making this second wall. It's basically creating this gate where the, the sheep stand. And I, again, want to pay attention to the three-dimensionality of it, the three different sides. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the other side of the wall. You just basically want it to look like it is three-dimensional. So again, just putting on the many layers, bringing it right down to the same level at the bottom. You want the, the sheep to be standing on the same level of the ground that the, that the stone walls are. And we work a lot with this. If it doesn't start to look very good, just keep working on it. Um, you know, sometimes I, I do a project like this and I just, oh dear, I don't think that's quite right. And I just keep working on it and it comes together. So just, um, yeah. This is the time to get your browns and your grays and your blacks and um, even a little bit of green in there. We put quite a bit of green in there later on because, I mean, there's there's moss and plants growing um, amongst the, the stone wall as well. And if you've ever been to Ireland, this is exactly what you see, just stone wall upon stone wall. And, I mean, they've cleared their... They, acreages with with um, these stones and, and use them to build the walls amongst the farms. So it's really quite a sight to see. And if you ever are in England, the, the sheep are just so fun to, to see them. They look a little bit shaggy. Uh, I've made my sheep look a little bit more pure and um, whimsical than what they are uh, actually. So I'm just putting a few finishing touches on my stone walls. As you can see, I've added a little bit more brown shade. I've added more darkness. There is some green in here, as I mentioned. And it's just a, a matter of saying, okay, are we done here? And I'm just picking up some color now with my wet, wet brush and uh, a tissue to give it a little bit of a highlight. And I think this really helps to make the stones look like stones. They're outlined with sort of a darker tone, but then they've got a little bit of a highlight. And what we're going to do next is a smaller brush, zero to two, and we're just using the Payne's Gray at a very dark pigment to fill in the sheep's head. And I'm starting at the left-hand side, and they're all a little bit different, uh, but basically we're just showing where the ears are, um, making the snout come to a nice little round uh, point, um, you know, top of their head is round, 
and shapes of their ears can be a little bit different from from sheep to sheep but basically we're just filling that in and that really helps to to make the sheep pop I think um, and especially depending on the color that you've got in the background um, this dark color will will be the where our eye goes first so I don't actually put any um, of the the sheep's sort of facial expressions in there it's just all black and I just continue to to um, you know put the, the the paint over top of layer by layer make sure it's nice and dark that one in the middle of the ears are a little bit funny shape but I'll probably fix that up and um, this is a really good starting point then to to do the rest of the sheep so before you jump in just have a really good look at the design of your sheep. Do they look like they're standing balanced? Is the level of the ground with the level of the, the stone wall? Um, you know, you can see some of the feet, not all the feet. And um, you want the front one to look like it's coming out of the wall, the back one to have the wall in front of it. Um, so you have to sort of play with them, those a little bit and you want them to have a little bit of a lean. Um, they do have really uh, skinny looking legs when they're sheared and so I want that look but these uh, sheep are not sheared so um, it's sort of finding that that look that um, that gives them the balanced look that they're actually standing on those legs. So just take your time. I'm using the Payne's Gray again. You can use um, a little bit of the, the um, lighter shade and then go over it with with black because they do tend to be quite dark and again just make them sort of look like they're going up into the into the wall and so here I'm just starting to spread a little bit of this color around I've only got water on my brush it might be a little bit gray because of what I've been painting but basically I'm just going to spread you can imagine the the tops of the legs would be where the the darkest wool might be and then the rest of the the sheep is is not pure white so we want to put some shadow in there to bring out the look of white um, so leave some of your paper white and just put sort of round brush strokes to make it look like they're they're a round body and again around the bottom it's going to be the darkest and if it's looking a little dark, you can just use your tissue and, and pull some up. Um, remember that the, the paint does dry quite a bit lighter than what you see it wet on your paper. So on to the second sheep and just pulling the darkest shades from the bottom with uh, nice curving strokes to make it look like a nice round belly and leaving the top a little bit more light in color so you can leave the, the paper light at the top leave it white and um, just play with that a little bit to, to make it look like there is some shadow in the sheep's coat I don't know if you call it wool when the they're still when they're not sheared but um, that's sort of how I look at it this is these are sheep running around with potential sweaters <laughs> beautiful wool that is created by these animals. It's just amazing. Okay, I finished up the third sheep and played with the, the heads a little bit. I just want to show you something on the other print. The, the level of the ground was even for each of the sheep and I can see how the, the middle one here is a little bit forward and it looks like it's a little bit forward and I like the way that that looks. So I'm not sure if you've positioned your legs up for your sheep to be all on one level either way is perfectly fine I think this gives it a little bit more uh, realistic look so now I'm just using my mop brush again and I'm I'm um, wetting down the grass in front of the sheep and I, I spend quite a bit of time on this area because this is where your eye goes first and it's really uh, where the more detail is so what I'm doing is just putting a very nice light um, green base this is my dust green but with lots of water in it and just adding a layer upon layer to give it a, a really nice uh, look and I'm going to put more grass um, in in this one and I end up putting more stone in the front as well so um, I just sort of take it 
one step at a time, layer by layer, and, and adding some green. This is um, the burnt sienna along with uh, sap green. It gives it more of a, an olive green look to it. And by putting it right below this, the, the sheep, you can just sort of see I've left that, that sort of sappy moss green just below the sheep. It almost looks like the beginnings of shadows or um, you know a landing place for them, uh, maybe more of a pathway rather than just green uh, field. It's, it's got a real nice, um, you know, sort of, it brings their feet to be planted on ground. And then once we put the grass around, it'll look even better. So that was the finished uh, painting that we just saw. And I wanted to show you before we started in with the clover. They're just basically little branches. And it's sort of hard to see because of my hand the way that it's positioned. But I just made little three-leaf uh, branches, um, stems, from the top of the the um, the stonework. And I, I don't even know if this is how they grow in uh, Ireland, but um, I do have some of uh, my grandmother's um, shamrock plant growing and has been growing for some time and they're very hardy. I don't know if they would survive the winter outdoors, but this is how I imagine it might look. And I just thought it would add a little bit of interest because the sheep's head is, is headed towards the, the stonework. It'd be kind of fun to have some greenery there. If you don't want to do the shamrocks, you can do another plant, but I think it, it does add sort of a, a fun little um, dimension to it. So it's sort of falling over the edge of the, the stonework. So I've chosen um, quite a brighter shade of green, uh, emerald green, and I believe I added just a touch of the sap green as well. And it gives it a nice, fresh, uh, lively look to it. And I just uh, keep putting little stems and little leaves, three little leaves on each one and just uh, filling that out until I like the, the composition of it. And I like the way that turned out too. So I went back over with a, a darker shade of the Payne's Grey over top of the sheep's head. I wanted them to really stand out as, as that dark color that they are. And uh, so for each one of them. And then also just highlighting the legs. I'm going to start doing a little bit more of the grass in front. I want to make sure that those legs are how I want them to look before I start putting grass around them. So again, just look at the composition of them, the the um, the angle that the legs are, maybe how far the legs go down. Uh, maybe the there's one that looks like it's in front, maybe bring their, their legs down just a touch more to, to make it look like it's in the front. And I'm just adding a little bit more to the clover on the wall. Some of it is a little bit lighter, some of it a little bit darker. But just remember, it is fairly close to what we can see. So we want a, a little bit of detail there. And just putting the layer upon layer of the green upon green really helps to make it look like it's bushy and not just a few stems. Now we're going to start putting actual blades of grass all around the bottom uh, to start. Anyway, this is emerald green and dust green mixed together, uh, a little bit of sap green. You can use uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber, whatever your um, greens and, and, uh, and browns are together because basically this is a, a darker area of the picture at the lower part of the wall. Um, as you know, the sun is is uh, the, represented by the yellow in the trees, and if, if that's where the light is coming from, then this side of the wall is going to be darker. The space between the, um, the sheep's legs, that's going to be a little bit darker too, because they cast a shadow on the ground. But basically, we're just going to go through and put lots of little upward strokes of, of this mix of green. I'm using my zero uh, two uh, round brush to do this, and you can use a finer one if you choose. So I finished up with the grass, and now I'm going to come in and make some uh, nice little round um, stonework. And so we're round on the top and flat on the bottom. And I wanted to do this before we put any more grass in because we're going to put grass 
then uh, amongst these these stones so we want the stones to go in first this is Payne's gray and a little bit of the burnt umber um, I, I like more of a gray tone I think for these stones they're uh, a little close to the front so you want them to look um, you know dark but also not to be the center of focus you just want to create that uh, foreground is what we're doing. We're creating a foreground so that I, our eyes will take us into the picture. And the ones in the center are a little bit darker, the ones on the outside a little bit lighter. And again, you know, you can sort of argue, well, the light is going to be darker where the stone wall is, but um, you know, just go with whatever looks good, whatever feels good. Sometimes you just have to put those marks in there to see what it looks like and and um, play with it as time goes on. So I'm just filling in a little bit more of the green behind the stones, uh, waiting for that to dry a little bit. What we're trying to do is create a platform so that it looks like the, the sheep are actually um, on a base uh, on the ground, a foundation. We don't want them to look like they're floating. So as you're working on this foreground, fill in um, with a darker shade just under the sheep. So it really does look like there is a shadow there where it's going to be darker where their feet are, where their bodies are, are casting that shadow on the ground. So we're just finishing up here with a few more blades of grass and filling in those shadows beneath the sheep. I'm uh, hoping that this has been inspirational for you, motivational to, um, to take this simple design um, and uh, make it your own. We've, um, you know, just uh, done a couple of different uh, designs with the, the mauve background or the all green, uh, a little bit of clover on the wall. And I'm including um, what I did was the, the Rock of Cashel. I wasn't able to um, capture the video of completing that, but uh, I just made a hill behind the sheep and uh, drew out the castle. And uh, this uh, Rock of Cashel, very special place in Ireland. Uh, we visited uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, sheep are a little bit uh, different positioned, but I really do like the way all of these turned out. They've all got their own sort of personality. So I have uh, posted the templates on my shiftyourcore.com website. Uh, free templates for your download if you want to give those a try. And uh, as I mentioned, we do these paint classes every Thursday if you'd like to join us live. Registration link in the description. I hope you enjoy that. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you wherever you are.